All right, what's happening? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I feel like it's time. While I was sitting down watching the combine, I'm seeing some of my Georgia Bulldogs kill it. I see my boy Lad McConkey, my boy A.D. Mitchell, even though he was most recently in Texas. But I'm seeing a lot of my guys go out there and kill it. I can't wait for the rest of today and tomorrow as well. But since I was in the draft spirit watching the combine and all, I felt like this was the best time to go ahead and do my Drake May versus Jaden Daniels breakdown, man. Who's better specifically at what? We're going to talk about things like who has the higher ceiling, who has the higher floor, and why. We're going to do like a traits versus traits battle, basically. And who was the best choice for the commanders with the number two overall pick? And we're factoring in a lot of things. Who was the best fit for Washington's offensive coordinator, Cliff Kingsbury's air raid scheme and offense, even though it's going to be heavily Anthony Lynn influenced, so it may not look like a typical air raid scheme, maybe not even be as similar to the Arizona air raid scheme that he ran there going all the way back especially to 2021 when they had Zach Ertz and he was fully healthy so we're gonna still take a look at which of these two quarterbacks are a better fit we're gonna of course try to break down who's just the better prospect overall who's the best projection to the NFL level which quarterback is the most clutch which quarterback has the best arm talent and arm strength which quarterback is the best at handling pressure who has the best deep ball and many more metrics and traits even beyond just that I have like 20 something traits for each player to basically specify like between those two this guy is better than that guy at that specific things and we're going to talk about like 40 something different traits between just two of them and then at the very end i'm gonna also give you some traits that they're both elite at that like being compared to other quarterbacks this is like their bread and butter and it's really hard to choose a winner between those two quarterbacks and drake man Jaden daniels with some of these traits as well and then that's like a whole nother set of like nine traits so we're gonna do a deep dive into this i'm gonna include like a lot of advanced stats this is after i've done some extreme film study for these guys now of course i haven't watched every play of every game that these guys have done but based off of what i've seen so far and of course i have a lot more film to watch so maybe my opinion changes before we get to the draft which is april 25th over a month away almost two months away so who knows if my opinion changes but as of today from what i've seen so far i want to emphasize that from what i've watched so far this is who's winning these certain trait battles but before we dive into all of that make sure you still follow that like button still follow the subscription button and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned for all of the content man i'm working on a trade back scenario right now even though i prefer to take quarterback at number two overall and you're gonna definitely hear why when we do this drake may versus Jaden daniels battle breakdown all of that type of stuff but I've seen a lot of people say that they would prefer to trade down or at the very least even if they don't prefer to trade down they just want to know what a trade back could potentially look like and i'm also taking a lot of the top performers from the combine and including them in my mock draft as well so that's going to double up as like a top combine performers at their respective positions and like a commander's trade back mock draft so it's really fun i've already made like the majority of the picks now i'm looking for a few sleepers and then i'm gonna come out with that video as well so stay tuned for that and a lot more content including film sessions for a lot of these draft prospects including the top combine bomb performers and drake man jaden daniels are working on some film sessions there as well so without further ado let's go ahead and get to this video let's get it all right so let's start with drake may Point number one, and again, this is a comparison between like, we're gonna go down Drake's traits, what he's better at than Jaden Daniels. Then we're gonna go to Jaden Daniels and say what he's better at than Drake May. And then at the end, we're gonna talk about a few things that they're just both so elite at that I really couldn't choose a winner when it came to those traits. Or the margins are just so small that I was just like, man, we have to have a, they're both great section at certain things. So again, we're starting with Drake May. Number one, Drake May is way younger. And if you're comparing 21-year-old Drake May to 21-year-old Jaden Daniels, May is easily better, I feel like. Even though I feel like Jaden Daniels is a little underrated, people are acting like that this 2023 season was just like a super flash in the pan fluke season. He wasn't as bad if you actually go and look at what he did with Arizona State or even what he did with LSU last year, especially to end the season. 
I mean, against my Georgia Bulldogs in the SEC Championship, come on now. So I feel like Jaden Daniels receives a little bit too much hate, and I feel like that's a weird narrative there. But at the same time, both at the age of 21, Drake May is easily better because Drake May is 21 right now. Jaden Daniels was 21 a couple of years ago. But last year in 2023, Jaden Daniels was clearly the better quarterback. We're going to talk about that during the Jaden Daniels part. But going back to when they're both on even playing field as far as age goes, at the very least, I got to give it to May, which is why a lot of people feel like May has the higher ceiling just purely based off of the fact that maybe he hasn't even scratched the surface of what he can do type of thing. So I can see that thinking. Point number two for Drake May. And going back to the age thing, this is sort of relevant but i feel like drake may played at a high level relatively like top draft quarterback level for two years versus Jaden daniels you could argue like one and a half kind of with flashes in his other years as well again i feel like they downplay Jaden daniels pre-2023 way too much but still no matter how high or low you are on 2022 Jaden daniels may was better overall over the past these two seasons and you'll you'll see that when we take a look at a lot of these stats drake may was arguably the best quarterback over the past two seasons because of how good he's been the past two seasons whereas Jaden daniels little iffy last year caleb williams especially statistically in certain categories a little iffy this year you can argue drake may was the better out of those three over the past two years if you're just including it as an entire sample size number three may seems way less likely to get hurt because you got to remember man i mean are you getting Jaden daniels like an anthony richardson broken by week three who weighs way more than him and is stronger than him you got to avoid taking those hits Jaden daniels or are you getting lamar jackson who has just mastered the science and ability of not getting hit hard so if he gets hurt it's typically something not hit related when was the last time you've seen lamar jackson get hit clean but regardless there's some question marks there with Jaden daniels whereas drake may hey man that guy is built sturdy like a justin herbert and the reason why this is so important is because none of these other traits that we're going to talk about throughout the rest of this video is going to matter if you're not healthy enough to play and use them including the positives of Jaden daniels in what does it matter if he's not healthy so drake may is built like justin herbert meanwhile Jaden daniels is literally built like emmanuel forbes and the only reason i care about this is because i'm afraid of him taking that one hit that takes him out for an extended period of time but i'm not worried about like his functional strength like can he reach across and get like a first down on fourth and one or like a qb sneak or if he's out in the open field he's scrambling and we really need that one yard can he like after contact still lean forward i'm not worried about that i'm worried about his body being sturdy whereas again while we're talking about this in the drake may part of this is because i don't have those same worries with drake may so as far as health goes i definitely give drake may the edge there as well number four may has the stronger arm now i do feel like again just like with one of the, some of the other things we're going to talk about in this video i feel like Jaden daniels getting played with and getting downplayed when it comes to like his arm strength especially but also the fact that he wasn't good until 2023 i feel like a, there's some weird narratives going around with Jaden daniels now he may not have like the explosive rocket arm like a josh allen or a justin herbert or a drake may but Jaden daniels arm is still really good he was the best deep ball passer for a reason we'll talk about that in the Jaden daniels part but as far as drake may is concerned he clearly has the stronger arm and you could argue it may not even necessarily be close especially when it comes to like off platform throws where he's off of one leg off of one foot one toe sometimes having to just sling it real quick like a little flick you could tell that drake may's arm strength just arm strength purely is stronger than Jaden daniels now there's a toss-up when you're talking arm talent who can make the best throws because arm talent isn't just arm strength now that's a debate but arm strength may got that easily Point number five in May's favor. May had to deal with a lot more drops than Jaden Daniels. So I just want you to keep that in mind when we discuss stats because Jaden Daniels' receivers dropped the ball 6.7% of the time. Whereas Drake May's receivers dropped the ball 8.2% of the time. So when we're talking about stats, who has such and such passing yards, who has such and such touchdowns, like the surface stats that don't really dive into what really went down and why Drake May had a certain amount of incompletions. Remember that his receivers did drop passes easily more than Jaden Daniels' receivers. And then we're going to talk about Jaden Daniels' receivers later in the Jaden Daniels section as well. May, I think I actually talk about it in the Drake May section. We'll see. You just know we're going to talk about Malik Neighbors and those guys. Number six, arguably higher ceiling, but 
more specifically, Drake May does have the higher arm ceiling. I think Jaden has a higher overall ceiling in my personal opinion. Again, we'll talk about why in the Jaden Daniels section, but May definitely has the higher arm ceiling. Just off of the arm strength, just off of the random plays where, again, he's on one toe having to flick it with no proper form, no ability to use his legs to add some power to the throw, just purely only arm involved in the way that he can flick the ball. Jaden Daniels, I feel like is underrated in that category. I feel like he's still great, but Drake May is just like very elite when it comes to arm strength. Then number seven, when it comes to traits and measurables, you can say that Drake May has the lean for a more prototypical quarterback style and build that most NFL teams want. So that's definitely a positive in Drake May's category that he's that prototypical quarterback build and the way he plays and all of that type of stuff. There's going to be more offensive coordinators out there that are like, I can fix that. I can do that than there is potentially with like a Jaden Daniels, which takes me to point number eight. Drake May is also more flexible to more offensive scheme fits. More, He's more scheme diverse, just simply because a lot of offensive coordinators don't even have the plan or even the confidence to put the right offense around a Jaden Daniels to get the most out of him and his legs. Whereas Drake May, even though he's coming from the air raid system, which is not extremely NFL friendly, but then again, Cliff Kingsbury runs some sort of the air raid system. So as far as the commanders go, that isn't much of a concern from us. But again, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, my fault. Even though he's coming from an air raid system, he has the traits to potentially be great in most NFL offenses just off of his build and his play style, just like point number seven. He's definitely more scheme diverse. He can fit in more offensive schemes than Jaden Daniels could. But we're going to discuss that in the Jaden Daniels part because I feel like that's more so on the coaches than the player. But still, Drake May is like the easier player pick when it comes to no matter what offensive scheme you're running when in doubt drake may is an easier more likely fit number nine drake may man when he's on he's on like he literally looks like quarterback one at times and the same can be said for Jaden daniels as well at times but it's just something about when you only look at drake may's good plays that's it only look at the highlights you're looking sometimes like man that's gotta be the number one pick right like he's just gotta be and then number 10 experience playing at a high level with a poor supporting cast man he didn't have much around him at all you could argue he had the least around him out of all of the top three quarterbacks there's even a highlight where may converts a long third down while standing in his own end zone even though the receiver tripped like those are the things he had to deal with more drop passes than Jaden daniels and his receivers were falling all over the place and i don't believe there's a stat for that you just gotta watch the tape and see that these guys are just for some reason slipping and falling for no reason just slipping on air banana peels on the on the field i don't know what's going on but at the same time this is one that i question putting in the drake advantages list because even though he didn't have much help it's still an argument to who did he even play so i feel like it honestly kind of equals out like Jaden daniels better receivers but also going against way tougher defenses whereas drake may worse receivers worse offensive line but also worse defenses it kind of evens out but i'm gonna still give that to drake may just in case we're just gonna give him the edge there for just for his experience with having to make up for the fact that his receivers just aren't good especially this past season number 11 drake may even though Jaden daniels is the better runner i do feel like drake may has better pocket awareness and pocket movement when it just comes to just within the pocket having eyes in the back of your head I feel like Jaden Daniels is still great at this. Don't get me wrong. Jaden Daniels is not bad at this at all. But if I had to pick between the two, that's the point of this video. We're talking about traits. And if I had to pick one, who would I pick as the guy that has the advantage in that trait? I would have to lean towards Drake May right here. And I, I don't think it's like a big gap or anything. But if I just had to pick, I just had to put my money on one guy. It's him. The way he maneuvers in the pocket. Again, eyes in the back of his head. Like very subtle movements. Like it won't even be like a full on turn your body and scramble. It will be just like a quick shuttle to the right. Like one or two steps. And then deliver a really good ball to avoid getting hit by the pressure. So I feel like Drake May does deserve the edge there. Then number 12 may runs to throw more than daniels does now daniels has elite traits to be a top tier scramble to throw quarterback and then there is evidence of him being elite when he finally does throw while extending the play on the run and things like that but it's just not often enough in my opinion Jaden daniels has the lowest scramble to throw percentage out of all draftable quarterbacks in this draft all of them may looks to throw 
while running even more than a Jaden Daniels does. And again, Jaden Daniels is dead last out of all draftable quarterbacks in this upcoming draft coming in April. Daniels runs to run and prefers to take like an eight yard run over running and then looking for a receiver to make a 20 yard pass far too often. That's something you can easily coach up though. So I'm not worried about that with Jaden Daniels. I think Cliff Kingsbury, Brian Johnson, all those guys would get to him. Tavita Pritchard as well. David Blau, I believe that's our assistant quarterbacks coach. I think they would do a good job of getting that out because when he does do it, you can, you can argue he's the best at it. Like I've seen some throws with him literally full sprint running his projected whatever 4-4 four, four something 40 time that he would run if he were to run at the combine not even stopping full sprint to the sideline and then just flick it perfect in the basket throw so he has it in him but drake may does it far more often you could tell that he like literally works on that and that's a part of his game yeah i may run for a little bit but i'm looking to throw more than i'm looking to continue to run whereas Jaden daniels more so looks to continue to run just to let you know now number 13 if you believe in the pro football focus grading system may is literally god's gift to football like qb1 and everything because out of 15 draft quarterbacks on pro football focuses big board may over the last two years was number one in pro football focus passing grade on passing attempts beyond the sticks beyond the first down number one in pro football focus passing grade with no play action number one in pro football focus passing grade on straight dropbacks number two in pro football focus passing grade from a clean pocket and number three on pro football focus passing grade on first and second downs if you're a believer in pro football focus drake may is heaven sent to you next point number 14 may has a better anticipation as well as I, I would argue i feel like he throws to receivers before they're open just a little bit more than Jaden daniels again this is not to say that Jaden daniels doesn't as well again the whole point of this video is that if i'm really splitting hairs i'm gonna lean towards one or the other with some of these traits and this is one of the ones again that Jaden daniels is great at he anticipates throws i don't know why people say that he doesn't do this i don't i don't understand that narrative there's plenty of highlights showing him throwing to a receiver before he's even open with great anticipation i just feel like drake may has done it a little bit more often especially if we're talking about percentage wise relatively how often does he throw with anticipation versus not compared to a Jaden daniels i would give drake may the very slight edge there number 15 may has the ability to make throws while off balance or somebody even grabbing on him to bring him down he even has a left-handed throw for a touchdown because he was literally being tackled from the right side and he right-handed was like oh let me go ahead and move it over here and throw this touchdown real quick because i'm not giving up on this play and you know that kind of gives you a heart attack as a head coach and offensive coordinator and as a fan base going to the nfl level but man that's amazing so when you're talking about that ben roethlisberger ability to people grabbing onto your legs and your ankles like a josh allen he's still able to with no firm technical base because there's a 300 pound guy trying to take his ankle and put it in a twist and put him basically form him into a pretzel and slam him to the ground he's still able to make throws and Jaden daniels even as skinny as he is is pretty underrated in this area but he's not drake may number 16 he's arguably the best quarterback in the class at dealing with free rushes as well and what i mean by that is when a defensive player is heading towards drake may completely unblocked like immediately after the snap no quarterback in this class even including caleb williams was better at accounting for it either by just standing there and making a good throw and just knowing that you're about to get heat hit and just eating it no knowingly just be like well i guess i'm about to get toe up let me just go ahead and get rid of this anyway or using his legs to move out the way just long enough to get a good throw off again that pocket presence going back to that that little two steps to the side throw it and then now the edge rusher is a little late and then now if you hit me it's a penalty so drake may i feel like is arguably the best at that out of all quarterbacks including caleb williams let me go and get this out of the way caleb williams is my quarterback one this is the this is clearly a debate about who's quarterback two for me number 17 between the top three quarterbacks including caleb williams even though Drake May is the least mobile physically, Drake May had the lowest percentage on sacks on pressure dropbacks, going back to pocket presence. May and Caleb Williams are pretty close, but somehow the most elusive guy out of all three in Jada Daniels was the worst at this out of all top quarterbacks in this draft class and a few others. So it's actually amazing that the guy that's most mobile was the guy that was able to turn 
pressures into sacks more often than anybody else and for those of y'all that may not exactly understand what percentage of sacks or in pressure drop back means it means basically out of all of the times that a quarterback is pressured how often do those pressures result in sack so basically drake may is the best out of the top three quarterbacks at having the defensive player close enough to him to affect them which accounts as a pressure whether it's a qb hit qb hurry whatever and then due to i mean that could come from bad o-line that can come from bad play design that can come from a quarterback holding the ball too long who knows but drake may was the best at finding a way to either escape and run or escape and get the ball out of his hands better than anybody else with very subtle movements even though he's arguably the least mobile out of the top three guys and Jaden Daniels was the worst at this out of the top three guys even though he's the most mobile which is really interesting he's great out in the open field and again I think Jaden Daniels' pocket presence is very underrated but that is a scary stat because remember that's probably one of the biggest problems we had with Sam Howell this season was that whenever he was pressured it just seemed to result in the sack far more often than any other quarterback in the NFL and that was a big problem man because there was some advanced stats to show like once an offensive drive throughout the entire NFL this is all 32 teams included on average when a sack happens in an inoffensive drive it like dr drastically decreases your chances of scoring a touchdown on that drive there's like some extreme data around that I forgot what it was I reported it sometime in the middle of the season because how bad Sam Howe was at avoiding sacks but I mean that is something that we need to be aware of when it comes to Jaden Daniels but with Drake May you don't have to worry about it as much point number 18 and Jaden Daniels let me go and get this out the way made a lot of tight window throws but no more than Drake in my personal opinion now this is probably because Drake May's receivers were nowhere near as good and as open as Jaden Daniels receivers were but either way regardless of what was going on if you're just watching both of their tapes Drake May had to throw more tight window throws and he did throw more tight window throws and if anything that just shows that he has no fear which is a trait that I would like now of course you know, NFL level, those windows are going to get tighter and some of those corners may turn some of those, oh, wow, did you see that throw from Drake May into, why did you even throw that? Like, that was an obvious interception right there. So we'll see how it translates to the NFL level. But at the same time, from a positive view, the fact that he's willing to take those throws, take the risk on those throws, and has the arm strength and the ability to, to actually complete them, that does sound translatable to the NFL. We'll see how it goes, though. Point number 19. And to get really specific with May's mobility being underrated, May led all draft quarterbacks in first down carries on third and fourth down over the last two years with 42. Drake May had 42, Bo Nix had 31, Caleb Williams 23, and then Jaden Daniels 22. So I know a lot of, I know he's not faster than Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels, but when it comes to being productive and using his legs the right way, Drake May arguably over the past two years with the best, at, at the very least, at getting first downs now he's not going to take it to the house like a Jaden Daniels would but as far as keeping the chains moving with your legs you can argue at least statistically Drake May was the best out of any quarterback in this class point number 20 May is the only quarterback over the last two years to account for over 9,000 yards of total offense only quarterback in this class other than Caleb Williams to post in 89 pro football focus passing grade in multiple seasons as well so drake may has a lot of advanced stats to his side as well number 21 now i'm not sure if Jaden daniels did this or not i just haven't necessarily seen confirmation of it yet but i can confirm that drake may was changing protections at the line of scrimmage and that's a thing that we definitely covered at the next level I'm going to have to watch some more tape to conclude if Jaden Daniels did this or not. Because then if he did, then that means that I could take this instead of in the Drake May category to give him more points. I could put this in the both of them category that we're going to talk about at the end of this video where they both get points. Something that they're both elite at. But so far, again, this is as of March 2nd. We have until April 25th. For me to watch more film and then maybe this is something that's not in drake may's category just alone but as of what i've seen so far i have definitive proof that drake may change protections at the line i still gotta watch more to see if Jaden or do some more research to see like Jaden daniels in interviews and maybe lsu's offensive coordinator in interviews to see how they feel and what he actually took part in and stuff like that now number 22 may's cons all seem coachable like compared to Jaden Daniels where his biggest worry is probably his weight and like how skinny he is and how he may just be one hit away from getting seriously injured. Whereas Drake May, all of his negative traits that you worry about as far as drafting him second overall, especially to my commanders, 
it's all coachable. Jaden Daniels has a lot of coachable things as well. And then technically the weight thing, I mean, he could gain some weight, but the reason it didn't make any sense for him to gain some weight before the combine is because if you planned on running and you gain all of that weight to show how big and strong you are, but now you're slower because of it, it's not worth it. So that goes to my point that at the NFL level, if you do add a lot more muscle to Jaden Daniels to help his chances of avoiding injuries, I feel like if anything, he just needs to avoid getting hit. How about that? Let's just work on that more often. Stop getting hit with cartoon mallets while you're sprinting around, fighting for those extra three yards for absolutely no reason. You've already ran for 25. That extra three is not worth you taking the hits that he's taken so far in college. But either way, man, Jaden Daniels' weight is something that I struggle with increasing is my main point because then is he as fast as he was all of those electric plays that we see with his legs and the reason that a lot of us commanders fans including me won him a second overall if you give him too much weight and you do make him more durable that also probably eats at the speed that he has and now he's less fast and you know so whereas drake may again everything of his is more so consistency like he's literally done everything you can ask him to do as a coach, you just literally got to get it out of him more often. There's nothing Drake Bay hasn't done that an elite quarterback should do. It's literally just about consistency, and that's coachable. It doesn't always get coached up in players, but it's coachable. 23, and commanders-wise specifically, even though I feel like Jaden Daniels is the better fit, May is literally coming from an air raid scheme. I felt like that was noteworthy and should go into the Drake May side of the points. And then lastly, point number four, 24, my fault, in Drake May's favor. Even though I can't prove this at all, and I'm not even sure how true it is or whether I believe it or not, but I've heard that Drake May is the better leader between the two. We're hearing reports as of just earlier today or last night, I think it was, that said that Drake May has been do doing the best in the interviews. We saw a report like a couple of days ago that Jaden Daniels was killing his interviews. And then suddenly, as of yesterday, they're saying that Drake May has done the best in his interviews. So they're both interviewing well. But I guess if based on reports, if anything, Drake May is the guy that they would lean towards as far as who's hitting the interviews the best. And I've seen videos of Drake May like breaking down his own tape with Colt McCoy and stuff like that. And he seemed like a very really lovable guy whereas Jaden Daniels is more the quiet reserve guy very optimistic and then Caleb Williams the super cocky super confident guy and me personally I prefer that personality I'm not gonna lie but between Jaden Daniels and Drake May I don't necessarily have a preference in between those two personalities but from what we're hearing around league circles it sounds like from NFL executives they prefer Drake May's leadership style compared to like a Jaden Daniels who's a little bit more quiet and reserved but we'll see again me personally Rico of Street Scores this wouldn't be in my list of, of advantages to Drake May but I'm just using this as an opportunity to tell you what I've been hearing and reading all around the NFL so far since these combine interviews and meetings have been happening with teams now let's go to Jaden Daniels you see how I'm smiling because you can clearly tell I do prefer Jaden Daniels even after all of that I'm still slightly leaning towards Jaden Daniels, and here is why. Number one, he played against higher level of competition in 2023. Now, of course, of course, he had better receivers to do it with as well, but I still feel like that's noteworthy that he was going against Alabama in SEC defenses. Meanwhile, Drake May was struggling against Virginia in Georgia Tech and stuff. Yeah, come on, dog. They did enough said. Number two, Jaden Daniels was easily more clutch in 2023. Drake May ended the season on a very bad run. I believe he didn't even play in the final game of his season in the bowl game because he was probably, I'm hearing reports that he was worried that he may, like he was just on a bad streak. He was worried about putting on another bad performance and then it hurting his draft stock potentially. Whereas Jaden Daniels only seemed to get better in my opinion as the season went on. Again, going all the way back to the SEC championship game against my Georgia Bulldogs at the end of the 2022 season, I was scared. I was like, who, yo, who is this? And so he was already on my radar going into the 2023 season because I was like, this guy's different. And he was already one of my top quarterbacks going into the, I actually had him above a Jalen Milrow. I didn't think Jalen Milrow was going to be that good for Alabama because of the quarterback side of things. But Jaden Daniels, I saw at the end of 2022 that he was going to be at the very least one of the best quarterbacks in, at the very least in the SEC going into 2023. But then he ended up winning the Heisman. But again, as far as clutch goes, man, when it comes to making plays at the end of the game, when it comes to when you're playing against your best competition, when it comes to getting later into the season, Jaden Daniels literally only got better and always rose to the occasion. Whereas Drake May, whoo wee boy, those last few games were a doozy. It wasn't all bad, but ugly. 
Point number three in Jaden Daniels' favor. Jaden Daniels had the lower turnover worthy play percentage, but it's still very close. Jaden Daniels had a 1.6%. Drake May had a 1.9%. Caleb Williams had a 3.6%. A little scary right there for quarterback one. But either way, Jaden Daniels had the lowest turnover worthy play percentage. So if you're talking about elite legs, if you're talking about de best deep ball in the draft, which we're going to talk about later, and is less likely to turn the ball over out of all of the top three quarterbacks, I mean, that sounds excellent to me. Number four, he easily has the deadliest legs in the draft class. Like, there's just no way we're even having a debate about this one. You don't run for 1,134 yards, technically 1,250 yards if you take away sacks. You, you just discount that. And 10 touchdowns in the SEC with the fastest, strongest, most freak athlete guys in college football by accident. You don't just accidentally luckily do that he also forced 101 missed tackles over the past two seasons that's elite amongst even running backs let alone the quarterback category by itself number five he had the best deep ball in the class it's only between him and michael Penix jr as an argument but if you want to go straight stats we can start there Jaden Daniels had a 99.2 pro football focus passing grade on throws 20 plus yards down the field. He may not have the strongest arm, but what does it matter when he's almost a pro football focus grade of perfection, 0.8% away from perfection. When does that happen for pro football focus on any throws 20 plus yards down the field? That, I mean, no other quarterback was even close. And if you don't even want to believe pro football focus, if you're not a pro football focus guy, Jaden Daniels had a 63.6% .6 completion percentage on those 20 plus yard throws, which was 33 out of 55. Also, by far the best out of any of these draft quarterbacks. I don't think anybody else was even in the 60%. Like he, he completely is like a gap over everybody when it comes to the deep ball, even over Caleb Williams and Drake May, even though those guys have stronger arms, Jaden Daniels just is way more accurate. And at the end of the day, I I prefer that number six more specifically the hardest route to cover in the nfl the slot fade no quarterback was better at hitting that route perfectly and consistently than Jaden daniels in 2023 the hardest route for a cornerback to cover ask any db in the nfl they will say the slot fade and Jaden daniels is the best at throwing the hardest route to cover in the nfl than any quarterback in this draft class and i feel like that alone should have like a golden star next to it if you really want to scare defenses you have Jaden daniels as your quarterback and now they're panicking about a potential slot fade and then you don't even throw the slot fade you do other routes because they're just so focused on stopping that slot fade it's chess man point number seven speaking of best how about he was also just straight up the best quarterback in college football in 2023 like let's start there I know we're trying to project for the NFL, which is why we're debating between Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Caleb Williams as far as the draft goes. But there is absolutely no debate who was the best college football quarterback last season. He won the Heisman for a reason, people. He led college football in QBR and total EPA with marks of 95.7 and 132.3 respectively. Bo Nix was the only other power five quarterback with at least a 100 EPA and it's still not even close to Jaden Daniels' 132.3. And he was also responsible for 103 explosive plays last year. I mean, that was arguably one of the best years of a quarterback we've seen in college football ever. It sucks that, I mean, if he would have went on to win like a championship, which as a Georgia Bulldog fan, I'm glad he didn't because I don't feel like hearing that from LSU fans. But if he won a championship, then he definitely would have been in more contention for a lot of best quarterbacks of all time in college football. He would have been up there with like Joe Burrow, who did the same thing for LSU, but actually went all the way to win a championship. And then he's also point number eight. Jaden Daniels is the more efficient and trustworthy passer. Jaden Daniels had less wide open misses than a Drake May. Like those just for absolutely no reason misses where the receiver is wide open. Protection is great. And then the quarterback just throws the ball at the receiver's feet or just 10 yards over their head for absolutely no reason. So Jaden Daniels will probably anger Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson way less often than a Drake May would, especially as a rookie. I mean, May has drives where he literally looks like the best quarterback in the draft. And then the very next drive in that same game, he'll just miss everything. Whereas Jaden Daniels, he just doesn't do that. I mean, of course, everybody comes with misses. Even Caleb Williams 
comes with misses. But Jaden Daniels compared to Drake May is, I don't even think it's close, man. Drake May, I don't know how he misses the easy ones so often. Jaden Daniels will by far have Cliff Kingsbury pulling out whatever's left of his hair out of his head for sure number nine for Jaden Daniels in his favor he's also a better fit for Cliff Kingsbury's offense that literally created opportunities for Kyler Murray to rip off 30 plus yard runs nobody else in this class is better at taking advantage of light boxes because the air raid system does like to take deep shots so it's going to be light boxes because the defense is going to focus on more so preventing big explosive plays so everything underneath should be open and easier to read for a quarterback and all of that type of stuff but also for a quarterback to run and to go ahead and get a big chunk gain in the run game with their legs and things like that you just got to slide more Jaden Daniels but hey man if there's light boxes and there's just this big gap because everybody's running man coverage and following receivers around I trust Jaden Daniels by far the most in this draft to pick up like a quick 30 yards whereas Caleb Williams will probably pick up like 10 or 12 and Drake may pick up like eight before he gets tackled or something like that also number 10 I would argue that he has the highest floor because of his legs and a higher ceiling because of his legs and his deep ball. Again, Drake May, you could say, has the higher floor because of age and because of just arm strength. But I feel like overall, if you're taking into account every trait and factor, I feel like Jaden Daniels not only has the higher floor, but also the higher ceiling. Me personally, again, some of y'all may come away with different opinions from watching the tape, or even if you agree with my traits, maybe you disagree with that conclusion. Who knows? Moving on to point 11, he also has a more translatable game to the NFL level, in my opinion. Again, I agree that Drake May can fit more offensive schemes, you could say. Like, he's more adjustable, adaptable to whatever scheme you want to run in the NFL. But I more so feel like that's more like laziness on the official coordinator's parts to not be able to take a talent like a Jaden Daniels to get the most out of him. I feel like, if anything, that's more of a offensive coordinator coaching and development problem than a Jaden Daniels problem. But I do, I can see where you say Drake may is more adaptable he's he's a better scheme fit to more nfl offenses than Jaden daniels but I also feel like with Jaden daniels legs his ability to not hit why not miss wide open receivers and an elite deep ball his game is more translatable to the nfl level i think he immediately comes in and you can expect him to win games week one definitely sooner than i would expect in like a drake may to be able to win you games drake may maybe five years down the line is the better quarterback but i feel like week one of the 2024 nfl regular season Jaden daniels definitely gives you the better chance to win number 12 He's better at hitting receivers and stride to maximize yak yardage as of right now as well. Not to say that Drake May doesn't do this. And again, like I brought up earlier, Drake May is better at throwing tight window throws. But as far as throwing the ball exactly where it needs to be to where a receiver doesn't have to stop his stride to slow down and catch it and then keep running, they just get to keep running full sprint and the ball is just magically right there, basically teleports to their hands. You could argue Jaden Daniels is between him and Caleb Williams who are the best at that in this class to me. Drake May is good at it. But I don't think he's Jaden Daniels, or at the very least hasn't done it as much as Jaden Daniels. But then again, Jaden Daniels did have the better receivers. Then point number 13, I feel like Jaden Daniels is definitely more difficult to game plan against. Like if you're a defensive coordinator, having a game plan for Jaden Daniels' traits is far more frustrating than having a game plan against Drake May's traits. But I do admit that Drake May's ceiling as a passer and underrated mobility could present very similar level of frustration once he actually unlocks it consistently enough for it to actually even matter. But as of right now, especially today, not even just, I mean, projection and today wise, I would argue that Jaden Daniels is, is a far bigger headache for defensive coordinators. I feel like they have to stay up a little bit later at night to game plan for him. Whereas Drake May, I feel like maybe defensive coordinators leading up to the game Leading up to Sunday, maybe they got to stay awake till like 3 a.m. game planning. I think Jaden Daniels, they might have to skip some sleep some nights to game plan for him and to make sure they hot, they they focus on what to do to suppress his abilities, to expose his weaknesses, and to keep him from just completely taking over a game. Now, point number 14, Jaden Daniels is also the easier projection just because, in my point of view, games like LSU versus Alabama with the better supporting cast versus better defense is the closest closest simulation to an NFL game possible arguably in college football last year yeah the NFL is completely different from college of course but with the amount of NFL talent in LSU's receiving room versus the amount of NFL talent in Alabama's defense and on top of that with how complicated Alabama's coverages are even compared to a lot of NFL coverages they're more complicated 
it just makes it so that that LSU versus Alabama game is easily the closest game to an NFL feel environment strategy as far as having to make adjustments account for tighter windows and things like that out of any of the quarterbacks that any of these top three quarterbacks played in last game last year easily I mean that boy Jaden Daniels had to make adjustments mid-game. He was having to read one of the most complicated secondary and coverage packages that any of these quarterbacks have ever had to go against, arguably. Again, shouts out to Logan Paulson. He brought up, he brought up a great point, and then I went to go check it out myself. Like, is Alabama's coverage is, like, really that complicated? And he's played in the NFL, and he said Alabama's secondary runs coverage packages that are even more complicated than a lot of NFL ones. And Jaden Daniels made adjustments mid-game to that and ate them a lot. So to me, that was literally like a sub NFL game and Jaden Daniels passed it with flying colors. And also, I hate how people use the fact that he had really good receivers as a knock against them in the draft process, like I foreshadowed earlier, because those receivers, I feel like, if anything, benefited just as much from having Jaden Daniels as their quarterback as Jaden Daniels benefited from having those guys as his receivers. So I hate that argument. And again, if we're talking about projections to the NFL, Jaden Daniels has thrown to NFL receivers before. Like he knows what it's like to have to throw it in stride to a guy that's running a 4-3 something. Whereas Drake May, I mean, it sucks. And you can see the positive side of it where he's had to deal with worse receivers. So when he gets to the NFL, he's going to be like, oh, my God, these guys are more open. But when especially when it comes to the yak yardage part and hitting guys in stride, Jaden Daniels has far better experience than Drake May having to throw it to these extremely fast wide receivers and knowing exactly where to put it so they can maximize their yards after catch. So it just depends on what angles you look at it from. Some of these traits is kind of like this guy. If you look at it this way, this guy's better. If you look at it this way, this guy's better. It gets really specific, man. I mean, again, we're splitting hairs here because I feel like the commanders would be lucky to get either of these guys. But when it comes to splitting hairs, that's why we're getting so deep and detailed into this. Point number 15 in Jaden Daniels' favor. Even if you think Drake May can be better two years down the road, there's no way other than injury risk that people think that Jaden Daniels isn't the better option for winning games right now and potentially being the best option for the commanders to pull the Texans in going from rookie season quarterback drafted second overall pick in the draft and then winning a division and also potentially winning a playoff game which goes back to Jaden Daniels having the higher floor in my opinion with a lot of it having to do with his legs and his ability to again not miss open receivers as much as Drake may Point number 16, going back to best quarterback in 2023, Jaden didn't even have one bad game in 2023. He's had bad moments. He had bad drives. But Jaden Daniels didn't. You can't find one just bad game in 2023. While Drake may arguably had three, Clemson, Virginia, NC State, and I'm just, I, it, it wasn't pretty for him, man. Number 17. Jaden Daniels is also less volatile and more consistent. Going back to the point about how Jaden Daniels misses way less easy throws than a Drake may, which leads me to the point that Jaden Daniels has less bust potential with his higher floor other than injuries. Again, if we're just ignoring injuries, and of course you can't ignore injuries, but if we're taking injuries out of it, because I believe if you look at the way that Lamar Jackson avoided getting hit, if Jaden Daniels could do that, he could stay healthy. Remember this past season, Lamar Jackson as the running quarterback was one of the healthiest quarterbacks in the NFL last season. Justin Herbert missed a lot of time, pocket quarterback with some mobility. Same thing with Joe Burrow. A lot of these pocket Get passes missed a lot of time last year in games Lamar Jackson didn't miss a single game he was pretty much fully healthy the whole way so if you're projecting Jaden Daniels can potentially make guys miss and know when to get out of bounds and get down instead of fighting for those extra yards if you project him to do that I don't think he has that much of an injury risk at all anyway it doesn't matter how skinny it is if he just doesn't get hit but I don't see when I'm talking about floors I don't see a scenario where Jaden Daniels just has this immense potential to get a coach fired. Like, maybe I could be tripping, but Drake May has this. You're either a Super Bowl contender with your, as a quarterback when you draft them, or your whole coaching staff is getting fired because you weren't able to fix a lot of the inconsistencies and technique issues in this game and decision-making issues. Like, I feel like J Drake May is definitely the more risky player, in my opinion. Some people talk about Jaden Daniels because of how skinny he is and the fact that he's a running quarterback, that he's the bigger boom potential, I mean, bust potential. I feel like Drake May, arguably, for the reasons I've just stated, actually has more bust potential than a Jaden Daniels, and Jaden Daniels is the safer pick. Number 18, Jaden Daniels also has a quicker release. I mean, just to be really specific and 
maybe some people consider this petty very nitpicky because drake may's release is not slow but Jaden daniels's release is just a little bit quicker in my opinion now number 19 also statistically Jaden was the better quarterback against the blitz and statistically was the best quarterback against zone coverage as well out of all draftable quarterbacks including caleb williams so when it comes to having to deal with blitzes and when it do and most nfl defenses run zone coverage because we're to the point that it's just so many elite receivers and quarterbacks in the nfl it's really difficult to run man coverage like some of the teams in the nfl that ran the most man coverage last year only ran it like what 30 or 40 percent of time somewhere in that range not even half the time it's a zone coverage league and if Jaden daniels is statistically the best against not only the blitz but more specifically zone coverage then it sounds like projection wise he would be the better quarterback at the nfl level and that's including caleb williams statistically and then 20 and going back to a point that I brought up earlier, Jaden has shown me the ability to adjust to what a defense is trying to do to him more often than Drake may, in my opinion. Now, granted, this is something that's very difficult to analyze and to put into a vacuum because who knows if it's just LSU's offensive coordinator telling Daniels to make certain adjustments mid-game. And even on top of that, maybe May made some adjustments that I just simply didn't pick up on and I didn't notice. So to be fair, I want to acknowledge that. But from my view, from what I've seen, from the tape I've seen so far, Jaden Daniels seems to make mid-game adjustments a little bit more. But I wouldn't put too much stock into this for the two reasons I've already stated, because I could easily be wrong here. I just want to give y'all that heads up. And now before we get to the part of this video where we talk about what both guys are elite at together, where I just even trying to split hairs, I just couldn't do it with these guys, man. But before we do that, let me clear up a few things because I have a few extra thoughts I want to throw in there. These are some points that I just feel like didn't necessarily fit in like the advantages section for either one it's just some things i want y'all to keep in mind point number one i feel like drake may is more dependent on talent around him while Jaden daniels is more dependent on putting being put in the right system because i feel like Jaden daniels is arguably more scheme dependent drake may i feel like is more so needs a good supporting cast for him to succeed so there goes like that venn diagram right there about which you would prefer and why it's like which one's a harder projection for the NFL level because it just depends on which way you're looking at it. Also, please stop comparing Jaden Daniels to RG3 and Drake made a Sam Howe. Different quarterbacks, point blank, especially Jaden Daniels, man. That is just disrespectful. We can't be watching the same player when you bring up RG3, even just passing the ball wise alone. Just that alone is just ridiculous that I keep seeing that. Also, I want to point out the fact that Jaden Daniels being a fifth-year senior isn't as much of a negative as a lot of people act like it is. Remember, Tom Brady, Joe Burrow, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, and Baker Mayfield were all fifth-year seniors, just to name a few. I didn't even just go do like a deep dive into all of the successful fifth-year seniors. Those are just a few. And then on the Drake May end, as well as Caleb Williams, losing games in college against bad teams does not automatically mean that you're a bad quarterback as well. So Pat Mahomes and Jared Goff both had losing records in college. Losing records. Lost more games than they won. And neither of them even played in the SEC or the Big Ten. Just like Drake Mayer, Caleb Williams, but they still went on to be successful. Pat Mahomes more than Jared Goff, but you still get my point. Just because you don't win games at the college level and everybody's saying, well, if you can't beat UCLA, how do you expect to beat the Ravens? But it's not that simple, man. Pat Mahomes at Texas Tech couldn't even beat sorry little random teams. And, and now look at them winning Super Bowls back to back the NFL level like it's nothing. So I wouldn't worry about that. So those are some points that I wanted to bring up to keep in the back of y'all minds in favor of both Jaden Daniels and Drake May. Now we're going to talk about some elite traits that both of those guys both have to the point that I couldn't even split hairs and make a decision. Point number one, they're both great at manipulating defenses with their eyes, looking one way to move the coverage that way and then throw the other way. I've seen that from both guys enough to where i feel like i'm comfortable enough to trust them to do that at the nfl level because when it comes to projections even if you look if you're looking at any quarterback's tape there's a chance that they've done everything you want them to do at least once but when it comes to projecting a quarterback you're looking at how often did they do it because i'm pretty sure jj mccarthy has, has at least one caleb williams wild wow throw in his repertoire in his film study but did he do it anywhere near as often as Jaden daniels drake may or a caleb williams did it no so that's where these projections come from so when i'm talking about when a quarterback does something a trait that they have we're talking relatively and how often do they do it not they've done it at all 
And when it comes to manipulating defenses with their eyes, I feel like Jaden Daniels and Drake May have done it enough to where I can project them to do it successfully at the NFL level. Also, sticking with that theme, number two, both have better pocket presence than college quarterbacks normally have coming out of college. Again, I gave Drake May the edge in this, but if Drake May didn't exist, we would all be hyping up Jaden Daniels for his pocket presence. It's just that Drake May is just that much better. Well, just slightly, but the fact that it's even better than Jaden Daniels is who I feel like is great. It's just like, man, we don't, I feel like we needed to acknowledge the fact that they're both great at it. Number three, both can make every throw. Yeah, May may just a little bit more than Daniels, just purely off of arm strength. But no matter what people feel about Daniels' arm strength, he was the be best deep ball thrower in college football last year, easily for a reason. Point number four, both show the ability and willingness to throw into the middle of the field. I don't know where this narrative that Jaden Daniels doesn't like to throw in the middle of the field is coming from. There's literally like a somebody was petty enough to put together a YouTube highlight tape of like two minutes of just full of plays of Jaden Daniels throwing the ball over the middle of the field. I don't know where that came from. So either way, man, both of these guys can do it. Like I'm seeing Jaden Daniels fans saying Drake May can't throw over the middle of the field. I'm seeing Drake May fans say Drake Jaden Daniels can't throw over the middle of the field. They both can. Now, of course, at the NFL level, it would be nice to see them both do it more coming from college. But I don't think there's a fear that, a, that like when it comes to coming out of college that we've had with a lot of other previous quarterbacks as far as them avoiding throwing to the middle of the field. Russell Wilson has made an entire NFL career avoiding throwing over the middle of the field because of mobility and a deep ball. And that Jaden Daniels is faster. And you can argue that Jaden Daniels is right behind him when it comes to that deep ball efficiency, at the very least coming out of college. But Jaden Daniels is coming in ready to throw at the middle of the field and Russell Wilson to this day even after winning a Super Bowl still doesn't like to throw over the middle of the field even when he was at his best and going on MVP candidate campaigns so I'm just trying to put that into perspective you if you want to say that Jaden Daniels is basically a better Russell Wilson you can say that as a comp if you really want to number five both are dual threats Drake May does not get enough credit for his mobility. Yeah, Jaden Daniels is, a, is, of course, faster, but that doesn't mean Drake May is not fast as well. If Jaden Daniels did not exist, we would be talking about Drake May's mobility a little bit more, just like what I talked about with the previous point. Just simply because Drake May exists and he's just so elite with pocket presence that people don't talk about Jaden Daniels as much and just comparing him to Drake May, they're going to act like he doesn't have it. Same thing with mobility. People are so enamored with Jaden Daniels' mobility and how fast these are comparing him to Lamar Jackson and Colin Murray and things like that, that people are just completely missing the fact that Drake May is also very mobile. Not Jaden Daniels, of course, but still definitely easily mobile enough. Number six, they both have crazy high ceilings. Even though I feel like Jaden Daniels has a slightly higher ceiling, it's still splitting hairs. It's very nitpicky. Both of these guys are put into the right situation, developed in the right way. Both of them have the potential to be like a top 10, top five quarterback easily. The talent is all there. The ball of clay is there. It's all about where they land, the coaching staff and things like that. What they put around them as far as personnel, receivers, offensive line, what the coaches do as far as developing them, working on their techniques, working on their issues, and then designing the offense that brings out their strength. So it's all dependent on that. But if we're talking about just pure natural talent on paper, both of these guys have ridiculous ceilings. And we're just being nitpicky when we're trying to argue who has the higher ceiling. Number seven, even though Jaden Daniels was the best deep ball thrower in college football last year, Drake May was also great. May finished with the most big time throws and was second in deep yards with 1,452. They are both big playmakers with their arms and i would argue with their legs as well for both of them including drake may point number eight both guys also show that they can do pre-snap reads and take advantage of what the defense is showing them and then lastly point nine and even though caleb williams is still my quarterback one neither of those guys and drake may or Jaden daniels fumble like a caleb williams it, I felt like that was the perfect thing to end it with because if we're trying to figure out what Drake May is better at and Jaden Daniels is better at and then we get to the point of the video where we're talking about they're both elite at these two things and it's hard to pick which one is better than the other between those two comparing both of those guys to Caleb Williams neither of those guys have anywhere near the fumbling problem of a Caleb Williams and that needs to be acknowledged these guys you don't have to worry about overall turnovers as much as Caleb Williams like we talked about earlier I believe Jaden Daniels has a one point six turnover worthy play percentage jd daniels was like a 1.9 and caleb williams was a 3.6 that is a different that's a higher level man that's a serious gap right there and the main reason i wanted to end the video with the things that they are both good at is because psychology wise 
And it's also a useful tactic when you're trying to push a certain agenda or utilize some type of propaganda. But if I would have ended the video highlighting the things that Jaden Daniels is best at, people would potentially both think that Jaden Daniels is better just because it's the most recent thing, recency bias. And just simply because it was the most recent information that I fed to you and people probably would have accused me of doing it on purpose. So the same thing would have happened if I would have ended the video with Drake May's advantages. People would have assumed I had an agenda to make Drake May sound better or something like that. But also even beyond that, I see it as a battle and it's like Drake May attacked, then Jaden Daniels countered. And then at the end, we kind of hug it out. And then we highlight how both guys are great and how both guys won it, like a participation trophy. So I just felt like that was the reason why I ended it with how they were both elite at certain things at the same time. Also, before we get up out of here, check out this survey with over 5,000 votes for my Commanders fans. Shouts out to Jordan at Washington today. He did a survey. He said, I'm curious. You have four options. At number two overall, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Marvin Harrison Jr., a trade back. The number one option was Jaden Daniels, and by far, 48.1% of the votes. Drake May was second with 28.6% of the votes. Trey Back was third with 13.9%, and Marvin Harrison Jr. was fourth at 9.4%. So after all of that, that's the end of this video. Please let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please, of course, in the comment section. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a war zone in there. And I'm going to get in there too as well to read and reply to as many comments as possible. But let me know between the two quarterbacks who you prefer. And let me know with different answers. Before watching this video, who do you prefer? Did after I presented this information to you, did your answer change? In it? And if so... Who is it now? Let me know all of the fully detailed reasons why you prefer which quarterback. Like some of these traits, first of all, y'all may just completely agree or disagree with me in certain traits and feel like, nah, Jaden Daniels does not have the higher floor. Let me know all of that. But also, even some of these traits, maybe you just looked at the tape and came away with different conclusions. Or maybe some of these traits, you just covet them more than the other traits. Like maybe you value Drake May's ability to hit tight window throws more than Jaden Daniels' ability to hit receivers that are wide open more consistently than a Drake may. Like, it just depends. Maybe you have a different scaling on which traits you prefer in a quarterback. So let me know all of that, all of those details and everything, man. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to read the comment section of this video. This video I thought was going to be 30 minutes. It looks like it's going to end up being an hour long. I apologize, but I'm sure a lot of y'all prefer the long videos, so that's why I keep doing them. But yeah, man, be on the lookout for more videos. Make sure you stiff arm that like button. Stiff on the subscription button and stiff on the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time i release an informative and a pna video just like this one and stay tuned also let me know in the comment section if you want me to do more comparison videos like this like maybe two other quarterbacks and throw them into the ring against each other and see who has the better traits very specifically like this deep dive just like this video or even like another position group to compare like offensive tackles or to compare wide receivers now of course nothing will be as complicated like the quarterback position i don't think if i were to do any other two players at any other position group it wouldn't go for an hour-long video like this but let me know if you're interested in me potentially comparing like marvin harrison jr to malik neighbors who's better at what and which one is actually the better wide receiver now that malik neighbors is starting to get a lot of wide receiver one talks lately at worst wide receiver one b to marvin harrison one a so let me know how you feel about all of that and of course man i appreciate the support man leave a like on the way out and be on the lookout for more videos because again i'm putting out like two three videos videos a day so stay tuned and i really appreciate y'all i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out